It's time to talk about the very best comic books of the week, and we've got a giant size episode. We got seven independent comics alone to recommend, and ten in total. It's going to be wall to wall indie comics at least for the first ten minutes, maybe even longer, before we even get to the big two stuff. And here with me, as always, is the man behind Board of Blood. One of the employees at <laughs> Comics Elite, Drew. How you doing? I'm doing great, Wes. Thanks for having me here. Uh, it's mm -hmm. great talking comics again. Let's do this. Let's comic book. Yeah, I got a little tug time, but let's talk about the very best comic books. We always start with the indie comics first, and uh, this week we got a lot to get through. This is what I think is the very best comic book that was released this week. It's from IDW. It's The Kill Lock, The Artist and Wraith, number two. Livio Ramondelli, once again, writing and illustrating. We finally get to see those two robots that need to go in there and apprehend the artist and wraith and really confront this, this uh, monstrosity that's been created. And it looks like it's invulnerable. And we pretty much find out that that's the case. They bring some backup. And this character, this, this uh, artist and wraith, just tears them apart to pieces, leaves them alive so they can go back and tell the forgers what happened and to leave them alone. And it sounds like he's got plans that are bigger. And we do get to see some of the original characters from the first miniseries that we hadn't hadn't made an appearance so far. I wasn't that keen on the first issue, but I loved this issue. Holy crap. This was just a fast-paced, action-packed comic. Nothing goes well for our, our heroes in this. But, uh, yeah, I, if you got to check this book out. It is really, really enjoyable, action-packed. You could definitely tell Livio Rabidelli's uh, specialty is robots. This thing sings. It looks gorgeous. Now let's go over to my other big recommendation this week, Valiant Comics. It's the only Valiant comic that's been worth reading in like two years. Shadow Man, number eight, Cullen Bunn, Pedro Andreo. I have made fun of Cullen Bunn in the past, but he is writing his ass off. This is the work of his comic book writing career, in my opinion. And they're in the dark side. The dark side is in this enormous nightmare, and it's almost like falling apart as they're trying to get to the bottom of what is actually happening. Obviously, we know that it's going to break through to the real world. This is an absolutely beautiful issue. Pedro Andreo took over for John Davis Hunt. I think he's doing a good job. I know you didn't get to read it because you guys didn't get your copies. In. That is right. We didn't get our copies, couldn't get it online. So I am pretty upset right now. I'm very jealous, very envious of you right now. You got to read it because I am enjoying Shadow Man as well. And yeah, this is some of Colin Bunn's best work he's ever done. You've got a treat waiting for you, my friend, because when you finally get to this one, it's not quite as good as last uh, month's issue, number seven, which I thought was yeah. brilliant. That might be like one of the best comics of the year so far, but it lives up to it. It's really, really good. Oh, man, I can't wait. You're, you're building, it, building it up, man. I love it. <laughs> you're you're going to like that one a lot. The, the other one I would recommend, I don't know if we'll go as in-depth on this one, but Life Zero, number three from Ablaze, Stefano Vietti, Marco Cicchetto. This one is absolutely fantastic as well. The art is what really sells it, and we do get to see a couple characters have some losses in here, and some kind of really emotional stuff, but that art from Cicchetto was just undeniable. Yeah, it's like chef kiss. Love it. Uh, but like you said, comics like this, they could have played it safe with some of these characters. They absolutely could have, but they don't, which is great. They actually go there with a, a couple of the deaths. I'm like, oh, crap. I did not see that coming. No, they really didn't because there is a moment where we see somebody that's been bitten by a zombie. And, you know, he's, he always have the, the, the conversation like, can we do it? Shouldn't we do it? Yeah. This felt pretty real. The dude's like, oh, you're a zombie? Boom. Yeah. You're not turning on my watch. I was like. Hell yeah. That's yeah, what I would he, do. Yeah, it's like a circle back from the, the previous issue in issue two. It's like, hey, these are the rules, man. These are the ones you set up. I like it when creators are willing to to really go there on a story like this because it really needs it if you're going to really buy into it and feel like you're there as well. Now let's go over to your recommendations. you got another 480 comics that we're going to talk about. First up from Vault Comics, one of the best publishers out there, pound for pound, the Rush number 5, size Spurrier, Nathan Gooden. We're going back to the gold rush. In this weird haunting story. Yeah. So in this, the, the thaw is beginning now in this uh, gold mining town. You know, people are starting to lose that that craziness, that madness. This issue is more of a slow burn to the the double twists at the end, and uh, we get to see uh, some revelations with sort of certain characters of some things they've been doing behind the scenes. We may or may not see a certain character that someone has been looking for at the very end of this. I don't want to spoil it. It is very Hitchcockian in, st in story buildup. I loved it. This is a terrific read, terrific series, Rush number five. Now, here's another comic book. I actually didn't read this one. I didn't even really uh, realize it was coming out. Image Comics, A Town Called Terror, number one, Steve Niles, Simon Kudransky. Simon Kudransky has a very unique style, certainly lends itself to horror, so I imagine there's some horror aspects of this at least. 
oh, this is a big, this is a heavy horror comic. This is horror 100%. It's great seeing Stephen Niles back. The story is simple. An old man has apparently died. He's called for his son to return to his childhood home that he escaped from. And uh, let's just say it's not exactly the nicest part of America that they're at. There's a great mystery involving uh, the dad and the guy's girlfriend trying to figure out what happened to him. The art by Simon, it is unbelievable. It is very fitting for this story. I love how this story is shaping up. A strong recommend for me, uh, a Town Called Terror, number one. Well, it's good to see Kodransky kind of going back to his roots. He obviously, he made his name on Spawn. Mm-hmm. Not the best known Spawn creator out there, but he is a good horror artist. Got really good style for that. Sounds like he knocked it out of the park here. Oh, absolutely. He did. Yeah. And I, I'm a bigger Stephen Niles fan and it's great seeing it from 30 days a night and he's back in the horror genre. And yeah, this is terrific. Off to a great start. Now let's go over to Dynamite Comics, who's been showing up on the list a lot more lately. we got Immortal Red Sonya, number one, Dan Abnett, Alessandro Miracolo. Dan Abnett is one of my favorite writers. He is great with female heroines. I was not expecting to have as much fun with this as I did, but when, until I saw Dan Abnett's name, I'm like, okay, quality. That's why his name is synonymous with quality. And we get more into the Arthurian legend, but with uh, Red Sonya as well. We get other characters uh, like the Merlin, Arthur, and the Green Knight. All these different elements popping into this, this issue in this series. It is very, very exciting and very different. If you're a Red Sonya fan, you should enjoy this. If you're a King Arthur fan, you should enjoy this. Yeah, Dan Abnett, he knocked it out of the park. Dynamite is definitely making some moves. A lot of people talk about a lot of their comic books, so... Now, the last one that you want to recommend, this is from Image Comics, Noctera. What are those great comic book pairings that you find on the indie scene but you don't really expect? Scott Snyder, Tony Daniel on a post-apocalyptic future kind of uh, – and it's got some horror vibes to it, but it's very dark. It's very bleak. A lot of fun stuff going on in this one. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, the, the series starting off, I wasn't the biggest fan. Don't, don't get me wrong. I love Tony Daniel's art in this. I wasn't too keen on the characters he was Scott was focusing on. But with this issue, like with the previous issue, there's a greater focus on the anti-hero now, Blacktop Bill. And Blacktop Bill is really popping out as the breakout star of this book. He needs to be the central focus because the other characters, they're all effectively one-dimensional, talk exactly the same. You don't really care about them. It's Blacktop Bill. He's got character. What he uses as weapons in this, it is truly creative and disturbing. He is the star. This is a great horror comic from Scott Snyder and Tony Daniel, Noctera number nine. If you see a Scott Snyder comic book and someone describes it as creative and disturbing, you know he's probably hit his sweet spot because that's really where he made his name over DC Comics, specifically with Detective Comics, the Black Mirror and stuff like that. So it sounds like he's tapped right back into those, those roots of where he came from. Now let's move over to the big two. We're only going to hit one Marvel comic. It just wasn't a great week for for Marvel and DC like it was for Image Comics. The only Marvel comic I can recommend is Black Panther number five, John Ridley, Juan Cabal. This thing has been really steady. It's kind of moving up there as one of the comic books that's standing out at Marvel as a really solid ongoing title. He's taken Black Panther in the most exciting direction in probably 10 years, maybe a little bit longer with the character. It's really worked out. You got all these cool aspects and it's really fleshing out Black Panther as a character and showing new aspects and new sides of the character that we hadn't seen before. Absolutely. You know, and I love the the political intrigue, you know, going on in Wakanda and him, you know, him disagreeing with members of their their new government. I am absolutely thrilled at at the ending of this and where it's going to go in the next issue. Because, don't get me wrong, I love Black Panther, but the movies and everything, they really give a focus on the, the, the vibranium, the costume. It's like, but we're going to see T'Challa, really, he doesn't need that stuff. T'Challa is T'Challa for a reason, and I can't wait for the next issue, but this one was a lot of fun, too. Uh, yeah, Black Panther is a solid read from Marvel Comics, one of the few. Moving over to DC Comics, I've already done a full review on this one, but I do recommend Flashpoint Beyond number zero. Jeff Johns knocks it out of the park. Eduardo Rizzo just doesn't keep up on, on his end. Do you have anything specific you wanted to say about Flashpoint Beyond? I, I agree with your sentiments. You know, It wasn't Eduardo Rizzo's best art, uh, but it was still a fun read. I do like where it's going. I do like the, the little teases on the chalkboard. It really reminded me of DC in the early 2000s when they would do that with David Dio on board. Like He would have these hidden messages. 
but uh, yeah, it's very promising. I, and I really hope it's fun. But like you said, that name, Tim Sheridan, is associated with the series coming up. I'm cautiously optimistic about where it's going to go. I'm with you, man. It's, you know, um, <laughs> Tim Sheridan's like the mark of death right now on a comic book, especially from DC. He literally hasn't been a part of one good comic book issue. Seeing him on a Jeff Johns comic, uh, hey, if anyone can fix him, I guess it's Jeff Johns, because you know the outline, the story's going to be solid. He started out really well. This is one of the better Zero issues I've ever read in my life. Yeah, as far as this Zero yeah. issues, this was intriguing. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I'm surprised this wasn't the free comic book, the, the free comic book day book. But uh, yeah, this was still a, yeah, it was a very fun read, and it, it's pretty funny. It's, dark, it's there's some dark co- dark comedic moments in this involving Barry Allen, which I I chuckled at. But um, yeah, it's a fun read. So this last one, I don't really read James Tynan anymore. I've kind of gotten uh, used to his tropes, and I'm kind of over it to be completely honest. But you're still on the trade, and you're recommending Same Man Universe Nightmare Country number one. The only person that could bring James Tynan back to DC Comics, it turns out, was Neil Gaiman. We got Lissandro uh, Esterin and Yannick Pocket on the art. What the hell goes on here? Why is this so good? Well, okay, me? so. So real quick, uh, I'm I I jumped off the James Tynan train a while ago. Like I've been like ever since the nice last house on the left last Friday the thirteenth. I know what you did. I, I don't care about that. I don't care about the stuff. But this was a lot of fun because one, I love horror comics. I love horror in general, and I love Clive Barker. There are some great horrific Clive Barker elements in this story. He's selling it, setting up a great horror story here, which is very shocking because I'm not a fan of Something is Killing the Children, Last House on the Left, Last Friday the 13th, whatever it's called. Uh, but this one was really good, very unsettling, very creepy, very disturbing, and the art is damn good, too. Like, this this character, the Corinthian, oh, my God, yeah, he's a character from that they've had in the past, but bringing him back now, woof, man. I, I loved it. I cannot wait to see where this goes. I really hope he can keep it up in the next the next few issues. This is a very solid read from the same man universe. Uh, James Tynan did a good job here. And it was a very solid comic book week. We had so many comics to talk about. We recommended 10 of them here. Seven indie comics that you must read this week. We got a Marvel comic. We got a couple of DC in there. If you want to, if you want my opinion, make sh- you can't miss the kill lock. You can't miss shadow man. What ones should people, if they if they have a limited budget, what should they not miss this week from your 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 pile? You know, I, I, even though I haven't read it, I'm we both agree on Shadow Man, so <laughs> I haven't read it. But I'm going to say pick up Shadow Man because yeah, we agree with that. And uh, I, I got to say Life Zero, Life Zero, it, it shocked me where they went. It really in the right. art by Marco is damn good. He absolutely nails the nails the visuals. You can see why he's a big up and coming uh, star at Marvel Comics. I think he should probably be one of their top two or three artists. Obviously, he's on the Daredevil book, and he's doing very good. Just finished up Devil's Raid. I want to say thank you very much to Drew for joining me, talking about the very best comic books this week. And he's going to be out at the con this week. And you got any more cons coming up in the future if people want to see you? Yeah. Uh, so we're going to be hitting the con circuit hard. We're going to be hitting all the fan expos this year. So we're going to be in Dallas. We're going to be at MegaCon. Uh, I think we're ECC, San Diego. We're going to be going to New York. We're going to be at all the fan expos, too. So, yeah, you will see me in the future. <laughs> Very nice. If you're at a fan expo, make sure you find the the uh, the Comics Elite booth. Go say hi to Drew, and maybe he'll sign a copy of Board of Blood or the other comic books he's written. Thank you so much. As I mentioned, I did do a full review of Flashpoint Beyond Number Zero with my good friend Josh, who's the Batman historian, the DC aficionado. If you didn't get to see that one and you're on the fence, definitely check out this review. We might be able to pique your interest in this because I definitely recommend it. The art might not be up to stuff, but the writing was really, really good. 